Hi and welcome back. So this looks a lot like the previous one. The difference is that now we have a coefficient in front of the x squared term that is no longer 1. And here we have a very specific rule on how we operate with this. And it goes as follows. So suppose we want to factor this expression. Here's our first step. What we're going to do is multiply this number, the first coefficient, by the last constant. And so we multiply 7 times 2 and we get 14. So the deal here, and it seems a little complicated at first, is we're going to multiply the 7 and the 2 and we get 14. And what we want now are two factors of 14 whose sum is 15. And it should be pretty clear that the numbers we want are 14 and 1. So now we go back to our original problem and we break up the middle term like this. Plus 14b plus 1b plus 2. And now we have four terms and we use grouping. So I factor out of the first two 7b and I get oops, I get b plus 2. Now this is a little confusing, but if I look at right here, I already have b plus 2. So I can write it like that. So now I can factor out this b plus 2, and I get 7b plus, well really what I get this can think of this as a 1 times a b plus 2. So I get 7b plus 1. Just check it out. b times 7b plus 1. I'm sorry, b plus 2 times 7b gives me this. b plus 2 times 1 gives me this. And there we go. So that's a kind of cool little thing right here. And we'll practice a couple more and you'll get the hang of that. Okay, so here we're looking to factor this one, and we do the same thing that we did before. We multiply 7 times 12, and we get 84. And what we'll want here is two factors of 84, whose sum is minus 44. So that means we're going to want two negative numbers, right? And what are those two negative numbers? Well, you can write all, all the pairs of factors of 84, but what you'll see is you want minus 2 and minus 42, right? Minus 2 times minus 42 gives you 84, and their sum is minus 44. So I go back to my original problem, and I group, now I rearrange the middle, so that I have 7n squared minus 2n minus 44n plus 12. Now it looks like I've made it more complicated, but really I can solve this by grouping now, taking an n out, and I get 7n minus 1. Over here I can take a minus 6 out, and I get Whoop, I made a mistake again, didn't I? So this should be a 42. Right? 42. Minus 6 out, and I get 7n minus 2. And this was a minus 2 also. Hmm. All right. Nice to catch your mistakes. So I get 7n minus 2 times n minus 6. So everybody makes mistakes, and it's important to be able to catch them. Okay, so take a look at that one, and we'll try again. Maybe the next time I won't make a mistake. Okay, let's look at this one. And I'm going to work hard not to make a mistake here. But sometimes you learn more when you make a mistake. So again, you want to have your wits about you, and you always want to remember to take out a greatest common factor, which in this case is 2. So if I take a 2 out, I get 2 times... 5a squared minus 
27a minus 18. Okay, so now I'm at that point, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 5 times minus 18, and I'm going to get minus 90. And what I want here is I want factors of minus 90 whose difference is going to be minus 27. And so the reason that it's a difference now is because this is a minus. And so I've got to have a plus and a minus, right? So let's think about this. What are two numbers whose product is minus 90 and whose difference is minus 27? So again, you got to think about that for a while, maybe write out all the factors of minus 90, the two terms who multiply together to give you minus 90, but you should come up with 3 and minus 30. They multiply to give you minus 90, and their difference is minus 27. So what I do is I rewrite this now as 2 times, okay, let's see if we can do it correctly, 5a squared plus 3a minus 30a minus 18. Okay, now we group, and what we can take out of the first two terms is just an a, and I get a 5a plus 3, and what can I take out of the next two terms? Minus 6, and I get better get the same thing, 5a plus 3. And so what I can do here is factor out the 5a plus 3. And this gets written as 2 times 5a plus 3 times a minus 6. See, I did it, no mistakes. Hopefully it makes a lot of sense and you get it. Let's try one more and then we'll be done. All right, so lots of big numbers, a lot of letters, but again, we got to be concentrating and looking to find what the GCF is. And in this case, the GCF, take a second, see if you can come up with it. It's 3a. So if I factor out the 3a, I get 6a squared minus 7ab minus 20b squared. So what I do is I multiply the 6 and the minus 20 and I get minus 120. And so I want two numbers that multiply to give you 120, minus 120, and whose difference is minus 7. Two factors of minus 120 whose difference is minus 7. So once again, you write out all the, all the two, two numbers that multiply to give you 120, and if you do it carefully enough, you'll find the numbers we're looking for are minus 15 and 8. They multiply to give you minus 120, and their difference is minus 7. So I go back to my original problem, and I write it as 3a times 6a squared minus 15ab plus 8ab minus 20b squared. Okay, and so now what I'm looking for as I group is what I can take out of each of those two terms. So it's going to be a 3a times, okay, out of those two terms what I can take out is a 3a. And I'm left with 2a minus 5b. 
out of the next two terms, what can I take out? 4b, and I'm left with, it better be the same, 2a minus 5b. And so now what I do is I take out the 2a minus 5b, the 2a minus 5b, and I get 3a times 2a minus 5b times 3a plus 4b. So, I kind of like these. They're nice little puzzles, and they have a very fixed rule on how to do them. Okay, so that's it for this section. I'll see you next time. Have a good day.